Amen. After the second coming of Christ, tonight we have come to the rapture of the saints. <clears throat> this may be a cold, a warm thing to you. I don't know. But anyhow, this uh, matter uh, is making confusions all the years in the last one and a half century. I believe from the beginning of the last century, that is the 19th century, the saints began particularly to uh, pay their attention to the matter of second coming. Then going along with the second coming, of course, you cannot avoid the uh, rapture of the saints. Uh, but I'd like to tell you, the study of the rapture of the saints does have a history. According to our knowledge, before last century, that was before 1900, nearly no Christians pay attention to the second coming of, the, of Christ, <coughs> neither to the rapture of the saints. For instance, Dengendorf was in the 17th, 1700-something, right? In his writings, it's not so easy to find out uh, a number of portions uh, that were related to the second coming or to the rapture of the saints. It was up to 1828 when the brethren uh, were raised up in England, they began to pay much attention to the second coming. This is a big subject, topic to their <coughs> teachings, the second coming. And this is surely related to the rapture. But the brethren, they didn't pay too much attention. They didn't pay adequate attention to the rapture. They only paid a certain amount of their attention to the rapture. So their study of the rapture was rather quite a lot, just in the main point, including the second coming. They are the same. Uh, from that time onward, uh, Bible students, even Bible scholars, teachers were raised up. The very top one, uh, which could be ranked at the first one, is J.H. Pember. Pember. Pember wrote four big books, very famous, very helpful. One is the Great Prophecy, the Great Prophecy of Israel, the church, and the nations, the Gentiles, this in general. The second is the great prophecy of Israel. The third is the great prophecy of the church. And the fourth is the great prophecy of the Gentiles, four big volumes. Still, you could get them. When I came to this country about 30 years ago, it was hard to get copies. But recently, with these uh, 15 years, these old uh, antiques were reprinted and distributed in bookstores. You can get them. And I do hope that <laughs> you young ones will spend some time to get them. But one thing I must make clear to you, all the <clears throat> teachers who paid that much attention to the second coming and the rapture of the saints. They didn't pay much attention to the life matter, including Pember. <laughs> it's strange. Actually, rapture of the saints should be involved, should be wrapped up with uh, the life matter. But I don't know why. In the uh, books, 
written, the excellent books written by these teachers on the second coming and the rapture, they didn't pay much attention to the matter of life. Okay, foreign pamper, you have to pick up Gavite, Robert Gavite. He is very good. And then following him, he, one of his students was uh, Penton, D.M. Penton. Penton just left this earth. He lived on this earth up to 19, about 50, I think. Uh, you can tell me, about 50. 50, 50. Just before that. Yeah, somewhere around 1950, <clears throat> when I was in the Philippines. Because we got to read, to read their books quite much. Uh, no doubt, we got all the help from the brethren in a general way, then from Mr. Pen, Mr. Pemper, then from <coughs> uh, uh, Gavite, then from Penton. Brother Nee was the first one. He was somewhat before me. He was the first one who collected all the helps from these books. And then at the, at the early days, that was six years ago, Brother Nee passed on his collection to us. You see this? Then sometimes I went back to Pember to check, to Gavite and uh, uh, the M. Now there is brother living in uh, uh, Florida by the name Dr. Schedule. He is now reprinting all the books by Gavite and Penty. You see, whatever he printed, he would give me as a gift. I think uh, probably more than 50 kinds of books printed already in the past five years by Doug Shuttle in uh, uh, Florida. <clears throat> so it's not so hard to get these books, right? But anyhow, you must remember not much life, <laughs> not much life in it. But we do know one person who was a sister paid much attention to the second coming and the rapture of the saints. She paid more life, more attention to the matter of life. And she lived in China in the town of Brother Ni for many years, about uh, 20 to 30 years. Every day, he did nothing but paying the attention to the life matter. He was waiting for the Lord's coming. See, uh, Brother Ni told me a story. <clears throat> One year, at the end of the year, Brother Ni went back to uh, her. Her name is Amy Barber. Uh, went back to her, and uh, at the evening time, she took Brother Ni to take a walk. While she was uh, walking with Brother Ni to the corner of the building, she told Brother Ni, it may be we just turn to the other side. He is there. Yeah. That means the Lord is there. You see, she was waiting for the Lord's coming for the rapture to such an extent. <coughs> very much. This is very, very much for this. In our collection of hymns, we collected her hymns, quite a few. At the rear of the hymnal collection, you could find out which hymn or hymns were written by her. Now I come to the uh, outline. I must tell you, <clears throat> for you trainees, this is the, this is the hardest outline. If you like to get into this outline, you mun, must know the entire book of Revelation. Amen. You must know the seven seals, then the seven trumpets, then the seven bulls. Right? You must know this. But of course, I realize and sympathize you don't know. But anyhow, <clears throat> now I pass on the key to you. Amen. 
you can use this as a key to open every room of the book of Revelation. If you like, like to do it, you can make it. But you must spend time. You must spend time. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, in all my <coughs> lessons to Chinese for this training, I never had any test on you, nearly. But for the second coming, sure, I will test you. And for the rapture of the saints, even the more. And the last one, <coughs> after this one, which will be the last lesson for this term, will be the last item of the New Testament teaching. That will be the New Jerusalem. The second coming, the rapture, and New Jerusalem, these three will be tested. You have to get yourself prepared. I'm thinking maybe not only verbally, but also in writing. You must, otherwise, you don't need to do it. I mean, you don't need to, to take such a lesson. It's easy to forget, but not easy to understand. It's hard for you to understand, and easy to forget. But tonight, you believe me, I'll try my best to impress you, to help you, to make this so easy for you to understand. Amen. I do believe after one or 20 minutes, you all will understand. Amen. And now, you'll understand. Amen. And I will give you some kind of chart on the blackboard. Uh, in the Chinese recovery of the New Testament, at the end, we do have a clear chart, even clear, a color chart, right? Uh, anyhow, you just try your best to follow me, okay? Now, we are still on the Apostles' teaching. That is the entire New Testament teaching. And the entire New Testament teaching is concerning God's New Testament economy. Right? From what point? Say it clearly, loudly. That's right. Everybody knows if you open up the New Testament in the first page, the first thing it tells you is the incarnation of the triune God to be born as a man by the name Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? That is the incarnation of the triune God, the first point of the New Testament teaching. Then you turn to the to the end of the book of the New Testament, in the last two pages or chapters, right? What atom you have? New Jerusalem. So simple, the New Jerusalem. Amen. It's very good today, the, the name, the title, Jerusalem. Everybody knows. Right. Even there's one, right? <laughs> and Palestine, the capital today of, uh, uh, well, let me be careful. Not yet, I think. But anyhow, that is the old capital of Israel, right. Jerusalem. Uh, that the old one, but there will be a new one. Amen. Yeah. So the last point of New Testament teaching is the new Jerusalem. Amen. From the incarnation to the new Jerusalem. And uh, our teaching in this training on the New Testament teaching has come to the very next lesson from the rear. And the last one will be what? The New Jerusalem. That will be next, the law waiting, Thursday, uh, Wednesday night. So tonight, we are on the rapture of the saints. Amen. You don't have the word rapture in the Bible. And if you go to Webs, even Webs doesn't tell you quite clearly what is rapture, right? Uh, could you, any one of you tell me what Webster interpret the word rapture? Think about it, I know. Kind of ecstasy. Yeah, he's right. You got crazy. <laughs> you got ecstatic. A kind of ecstasy. <laughs> you got excited. <laughs> what is this? Ecstasy. 
I got, I, I'm now exotic, crazy, disruptor. <laughs> if you don't know how to be crazy, you could never be ruptured. <laughs> Everyone who is ruptured must be a crazy one. Amen. You know, the most sober people are the sinners. The very sober. The gamblers. Everyone at the mahjong table is not exit. It's not crazy, it's very sober. Very sober. <laughs> because they are fighting for money there. The businessman is very sober. No sober businessman, no money. If you are crazy, it's a lose of money. We Christians every day lose money. We are crazy. How do you think about this? Now you understand to be rapture is to be crazy. Okay? Okay. Now, <laughs> the definition of this being crazy. The definition. What definition? Hey. Oh, number one, small one. To be raptured is the consummating step of God's full salvation in life. You know, God's salvation is in two aspects, in redemption and in life, right? Uh, Romans 5.10 says, through Christ's death, we got redeemed. We got justified. That is God's re salvation in redemption, the objective aspect of God's salvation. Then Romans 5.10 says, since we, we have been justified, redeemed through the death of Christ, how much more? How much, much more? We shall be saved in the life of Christ. Amen. This is the aspect of God's salvation, subjective aspect, salvation in his divine life. Amen. And in this salvation in life, there are steps. You know, the first step is God regenerated us. Am I right? He regenerated us. This is the first step. Right? Then following this, he is now transforming us. Right? Then the last step, the consummating step, is what is the transfiguring or transfiguration of our being. We will we will see later here. So this is the consummating. This tab that consummates God's salvation over us in the divine life. Okay? And this, you have ABC. Hey, this consummation step is the redemption of our body. The redemption of our body. Okay. Let me check with you. Thomas, have you been redeemed? Have you been redeemed? You see it? Yes. Yes, yes, right now. You have been redeemed. Okay, but look at your body. Does your body seem to be a redeemed body? No, not yet. Sure, you have to say no. Right. If you say yes, all these three people will argue with you. What's different, your body from ours? The same thing. We got cold, you got cold. <laughs> right? <laughs> we got tired, you got tired. You're not stronger than I, right? <laughs> How could you say that your body has been redeemed? Not yet. Right? But you have to say, not yet. Yet it is on the way. Amen. Amen. 
it is going to be redeemed. Amen. Even you could say, it is right now being redeemed. Amen. Now, <laughs> what is to redeem our body? It is just to change its nature with its condition. Do you know our physical nature is one that is always weak, firstly. Secondly, sick. Certainly, dying. Lastly, dead. Right? How is your body? I don't care how strong you are today. I still, you are. You are so easy to be what? Tired. Tired. You need to rest. You need to take a nap. You need to sleep, right? You need to drink a, a cup of coffee, but don't do it. That doesn't help you. But, you know. <laughs> OK, you need to be tired, then what? Sick, right? If you are tired, you don't sleep well, you don't sleep enough, be sure you will get a cold. Right? Or you will get TB on the links, right? Or you will get an ulcer on the stomach. You'll be sick. Then uh, falling sick, sickness, you will go to the hospital to be dying there. <laughs> right? This is your body. This is your nature and your condition. But to redeem our body is to change its nature. Amen. It's getting what? Stronger, not tired. Living, not dying. Amen. Okay, it's quite strange. You read the all line. Hey, the redemption of our body through the saturation of the divine element. You have to realize today with us the believers. A kind of saturation is going on. Amen. Saturation of what? Of the divine element. You know, to saturate something, you need some element. Right? And here is a cotton ball. Cotton ball. Right? If you use it, red ink to saturate it. Right? That is, you may say, saturation or permeation. Right? You can say that is a kind of saturation or permeation, right? The more, the more, the more ink you put in, and the more the cotton ball is saturated with the ink, with the element of the ink. You have to know within us, the believers, yes, outwardly we look the same as the unbelievers, but inwardly something hidden, right? Something hidden. Is going on. Amen. And that something is a kind of permeating, a kind of saturating, saturating of the divine element of God's life. It's saturating us. Quite often I feel so, especially at my age. Right? Six years ago, I didn't feel so much when I was 80, up to 80. But after 80, today, quite often, I feel something saturating me from within. Amen. Even today, when I was prepared to come to the, meet to the meeting, I was uh, just like this, you see. Then, mm -hmm. Something, something is saturating. Yeah. And what something is that? That is the saturating of the divine element by what? By a kind of sealing. You know, how to seal, you know? When you seal, you, you need some ink, right? Right? You seal the paper with your seal, then you need the ink. 
when they seal, right, touch the ink, and then seal the paper with the ink. If you take out the seal, the ink, the inking is stopped. But God's sealing is never taken away. The seal is here. <laughs> and the ink is coming. It's coming. It's coming. You have to realize within you there is a sealing. Both Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, and chapter 4, verse 30. In these two portions of Ephesians, we are told the Holy Spirit is the sealing ink. And God has sealed us with the Spirit as the sealing ink. And this sealing is never taken away. Amen. The sealing is still going on. So in those two portions of Ephesians, all says the sealing is going on and into, into what? Into the redemption of the body. Amen. The word into, you who know, just a little bit Greek, you know this word, is is. Is means what? Resulting in. Issuing in. Or until. Or for. This sealing within you is for the redemption Amen. of the body. You see? And this sealing of the Holy Spirit within you is issuing. Issuing in what? Issuing in the redemption of your body. We are just like a cotton ball, right? And the Holy Spirit is just like the sealing ink. And as long as the seal is on us, sealing, I tell you, that ink saturates us. Am I right? Then the sealing will saturate our entire body until our entire being will be permeated and saturated with the divine element as the sitting ink. Amen. Then we'll be no more white. We all will become red. Amen. No more white ball, Amen. but a red ball. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, are you white or, or, or red? Right? It's hard to say. If you see, brother, I got just saved three days ago. Okay, anyhow, you have a little bit, uh, a small pot of red. <laughs> and the pin is still there, infusing. Amen. Infusing the red in with you. Three days, you, you wait. If you are faithful, don't stay away. You wait for another three years. You'll be hot, quite pink. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then the injection of the ink is still going on. And the ink permits you, saturates you. And then you will be what? Red. Then you will be dark red. You will be purple. I think that will be type of your rapture. At that time, you will be matured. You will be also ecstatic. Amen. Quite often, you got crazy. Amen. I'm an old man, I must tell you. You don't know, secretly. I sometimes even would not let my wife know <laughs> that I was crazy. <laughs> right? In my bedroom or in my study room, I was sometimes crazy. But I don't like to let Sister Lee know <laughs> in order to keep, keep her at peace. If she knows I'm crazy, she was concerned. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you are new ones, you know. When you really got saved, right? You know, to be saved is to have Jesus, right? And tell you, if you have really this experience, you got excited. You're crazy. Crazy, right? 
then after three days, you may be cold, right? Then our brothers or sisters will go to visit you again, right? To put the injection needle on your shoulder <laughs> again. <laughs> then after half an hour, you got crazy again. I tell you, one day will come, your being crazy could never stop. Amen. All the time. Amen. All the time. Amen. Many of you, dear saints, do know, in these past three years, I got very much opposed, right? Criticized, defamed. You all know this, right? I got many letters to come to me, to comfort me, to encourage me, seeing this. Uh, I said to them, 90 letters just in my, in my bedroom, in my study room. I said to them, every day I sleep quite well. Every day, no exception. You check with my wife. Through all these years, every day I speak. I said, my wife used to tell me, you, you are snoring. <laughs> 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 I said, snoring is a good sign, right? <laughs> that means you have no worry, you are at peace, you rest, and you are excellent. Right? Every day, in the three years, every day, the angel can testify for me, not one night I didn't sleep well. You couldn't believe in the past three weeks, every day in the night, I slept eight and a half hours in the afternoon, two hours, 45 minutes. Wow. Every day. You believe or not, check with my wife. I just, I just slept so much. Otherwise, I cannot do so much work. In good sense, thank you for your comfort. Right? In good sense, I must tell you in truth, you don't need to comfort me. Mm. I have comfort already. Amen. I didn't comfort you. <laughs> do you sleep so well every day as I do? No. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Too much worry. Worry about what? Well, the Lord's Day morning meeting. <laughs> The Lord Day morning meeting is a time of enjoyment. Not right? a year ago, was it? <laughs> okay, anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, learn to be injected right. with some red spot Amen. to get yourself permeated, saturated. Then you'll be crazy. Amen. You'll be ruptured. Okay, anyhow, this is the meaning. What the redemption of the body? That is, through the saturation of the divine element, by the sealing of the Spirit of God. You have all these references. Okay, then B, this redemption of the body through a kind of saturation is the transfiguration of our body of humiliation. We have to realize our body has been humiliated. Number one, by the fall. By the fall, sin invaded our body. So today, in our body, right? Romans 7 says, even your members, in the members of our body, there is an evil thing. An evil thing, the sin. Sin doils. And this sin becomes a law of sin, doiling her in our members Amen. of the body. Right? And then this sin brings in death, and death implies weakness and sickness. So our body has been what? Has been humiliated by sin, by weakness by sickness, and eventually by death. So our body is not something glorious. Right? 
is something humiliated already, with mainly these four things, sin, weakness, sickness, and death. We all know today the human beings are not living. Everybody is dying. You think, friends, tonight, if you have not saved, been saved, you think you are living? I must tell you the truth. You are dying. Right? If you will not die within 50 years, I assure you, after 50 years, you will die. The most after 100 years, you'll die. Near Akash, you're all in this room. After 100 years, everybody dies. <laughs> we are not living. We are dying. We are dying persons. And this is what? This is kind of humiliation. But the redemption of body will change the nature and the condition. And that change will be a kind of transfiguration. Amen. Transfigure means to change the nature and the figure, the appearance. This is me. And this is clearly told by Ephes uh, Philippians 3.21. Even the word transfigure is used there. See. Eventually, this redemption, this transfiguration will bring us into glorification. Amen. We'll be glorified there. Amen. Right? The glorification of our entire being. Uh, also, I forget to tell you, the redemption of our body to transfigure the nature and the condition of our body of humiliation is also the sonship and the full sonship, sonship of whom? Sonship of God. We are sons of God. But do you know, we do have the uh, very reality of the sonship of God in our spirit. Amen. But today, we don't have much of the sonship of God in our body. Could you follow me? Hey, Peter, do you realize that not much sonship of God in your body? Why? Because just two days ago, you got cold. Right? A cold, this coldness bothers you. And that proves that you are short of sonship of God. Do you believe when you will be redeemed your body, and then by that time you still will get cold? No. <laughs> Why? Because our body will be transfigured into divinity. Amen. You be assured humanity will be bothered by coldness. We'll get cold. But divinity never. Amen. Our body still remains in our humanity not enter into divinity yet. One day, our body will get into divinity. Amen. And divinity is now saturating our human body. Amen. Right? And one day, this saturation will come up to the, what? To the consummation. The entire body will be consummated in the divinity. Amen. So by that time, we will have the full sonship. Today, if you go on the street, nobody can discern that you are a son of God. You are the same. You go to the airport, you go to the uh, department store, thousand people there. Nobody can discern that you are a son of God. 
But I come to Romans 8. One day, the sins of God will be manifested. Amen. People will see, oh, this one is a son of God. Amen. That is sonship. And that is redemption. Amen. This redemption of the full sonship of God is the glorification. That means we, the entire being, will be saturated with the glorification of the divine life. In other words, our humiliated body will be filled with the splendor of the divine life. Will be in that kind of splendor, that kind of glory, okay? It's hard for us to tell. Uh, then you have here, I tell you, of this glorification of our entire being, you have a reference to Second Thessalonians 1.10. And this verse says, Christ will come to glorify himself in us. Amen. This is a hard word to understand. How Christ will come to glorify himself in us. I must tell you, on the one hand, Christ's coming is from the heavens. And on the other hand, Christ's coming is from within us. Amen. <laughs> Could you tell me, is Christ today where? Where is he? He is firstly in the heavens then in us. Then when he comes, he comes from these two directions. From the heavens is from above to the earth, right? From within us is from our spirit to come out to appear in our body. The appearance of Christ from within us, that's his coming. Amen. And this kind of coming of his is his glorification. We have sung two hymns tonight, right? It, one says, Christ in us is a mystery, right? Christ in us is just a hope. Hope, nobody sees it there. Uh, but one day, this hope will manifest. Amen. That is our glory. When the inner hope will be manifested, it will become the outer glorification. Amen. So by that, Christ will glorify himself in us. That is our glorification. In our glorification, Christ will be glorified. Okay. Now, we have to see, small two, when this will happen, when this rapture, when this ecstasy, <coughs> this redemption, this transfiguration, and this glorification, when this will transpire, it says here, to transpire, okay, A, with the coming, in Greek, it's not the ordinary world coming. In Greek, this coming is parousia. And parousia means present. His presence. Uh, I believe last Wednesday I mentioned this. In the ancient time, among the Greeks, a dignified person coming. And his coming is honored as his presence. See, the city's mayor is present here. That means what? That means his parousia is here. So the New Testament uses such a word 
to denote Christ's second coming. And his second coming is the presence of a dignified person. Amen. And this presence will begin from where? From the third heaven, from the throne of God. Even before the great tribulation, this presence will begin there. Then this presence, this parousia, will travel from the third heaven to the air and will linger in the air for some time. For how long? I don't know. It may be for three days, even for one week. I don't know. And now it will linger in the air. Then this parousia will travel to this earth. Amen. When it travels to this earth, Second Thessalonians 2 8 says, there will be a kind of appearing of his presence. And this appearing will be shining, the shining, the appearing of his coming, of his parousia. So this uh, ecstasy, this rapture, redemption, transfiguration, glorification, whatsoever, will transpire with the coming, the parousia of Christ. When Christ will be present with us, this thing will happen. B, before and at the great tribulation. This policy of Christ will begin before the great tribulation, before the three and a half years of the last week of this age. <clears throat> at the same time, it will also transpire at the Great Tribulation. Later on, I'll give you the chart. Okay. A, B, C. Before and within the second half of the last week of the 70 weeks in Diana chapter 9. You have to study there. There, it firstly gives you several weeks then 62 weeks, and this means 69 weeks. Then this matter will be suspended. Then for a certain long period of time, then the last week, the seventh week will come. And the seventh week will not, has not come yet. We are waiting. We are waiting. Uh, The New Testament gives us some signs of the coming of the last week. <coughs> One strong sign is the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. You know, the Jews lost their kind of kingdom, lost their nation, and they became captives, and they were scattered on this earth. No people like them. They lost their country land, the father's land. They lost their country, they lost their nation, they lost their kingdom, and they were scattered for more than 26 centuries since A.D. A.D. I know, B.C., since before Christ, about 700 years, 600 years, you see. These many centuries, the last country, they were scattered among the Gentiles. But the Bible says one day the Lord will collect them back to their father's land, which is called the land of Palestine. In the Bible it says the good land. You know, this thing transpired all of a sudden in 1948. Before 1948, I got saved from 1925. So 23 years before 98, 1948. I got to know this. I was wondering, how could this be? 
How could this be? How could the scattered Jews be gathered together to their father's land again? I couldn't believe that. I was wondering whether I could see it in my life. Then one morning in Shanghai, I was working there for the Lord, 1948. The newspaper came out with big letters, Israel <laughs> restore the goddess trap of land along the river Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea. That was a real big news to me. So that was a sign. Right? Then, also, the New Testament tells us Jerusalem, as the capital of the nation of Israel, was captured last for years. B.C., before Christ, about 600 years or so, it was lost. Then, lastly, it was lost to Jordanians. To Jordanians. Jordan, the little nation of Jordan. Okay, then from 48 to 1967, 19 years in summertime. At that time, I was taking a surgery in San Francisco. In the hospital, newspaper came. Uh -huh. Jerusalem was taken over by Israel. That was called, I believe, Six Day War. Right. Okay. I saw all these things. These are the signs. These are the signs that last week will come. You know, things today are still happening, right, in the Mid, Mid, Mid East, right, around the Mediterranean Sea. And plus, today, the things happening concerning democracy among the, what, satellite countries around Russia. All things are transparent according to my view, because I know the prophecy in the Bible. I, I could say all the things are fulfilling the prophecy of the Bible. Amen. You know, this, uh, <laughs> this democracy exercised by the satellite countries around Russia fulfill what? You know the big image in Daniel chapter 2? Big image. The head is gold, the shoulder silver, the abdomen is copper or brass or bronze, whatsoever it is copper, right? Then the two big sides Two legs are iron. Then up to the ankle and the feet are half iron, half clay. Iron signifies the power of what? Of dictatorship, of autocracy, right? The clay signifies the people, the people. You know, the communists, they came up they put a mask on their face, saying they are for the people. Right. Actually, they are not for the people. Right. They are for themselves. Right. They are the top dictators. Right? right? And the Soviet Russia practiced this mask 70 years. Right. I know all these things because the things when Russia was under the revolution carried out by Lenin, I was there study. I saw the things going on. This was one year time. One year time. From 1919 to 1920, Lenin succeeded. He got the country. From 1970, uh, 19, no, no, 1920, they practiced communism with the full mask that they are for the people. Actually, they're not for the people. And the practice to this year, 90, 90, exactly 70 years. 70 years practice of communism, no success. You know, 
how many dollars the Russian people on the Kinshad, not too far from Moscow. Just about two or 100 miles from Moscow on the Kinshad, how much they make? The highest pay, 25 US dollars. Immense, immense. Could you believe? Our brother, Joe Kenyon, with two other brothers, went just three weeks ago. They returned. They told us. They said, here, we feed, we take care of a full-timer, right? Counting by 1,000, right? A co-worker with one wife, three children, at least you have to take care of such a family 2,400 US dollars here in Orange County. But Benzie told us, if we bring these 2,500, 2,400 dollars to, to the Soviet Union today, we can pay for 100 full-timers. Wow. This indicates the backward. They are far behind the culture. So this was a failure. This was why the satellite countries, small countries around Soviet all rebelled. Even the Russian people rebel. They don't want this. Today, <laughs> in Eastern Europe and in Russia, who is powerful? The clay or the iron? You tell me. Both. I tell you, when the clay wrap up, the iron, the iron becomes nothing. So today, it's so clear the clay is going on there right. for the fulfillment of that big image in Daniel <coughs> chapter 2. Right. Well, I have to go fast. <laughs> OK? <laughs> now, we got to know what is the rapture, right? And we have to know when the rapture will transpire. Now, I call New Testament, the rapture has sections, different sections. Uh, I like to tell you, in the uh, Old Testament type, you have a type there that typifies the rapture. What is the type? That is the harvest of the crop in the field. Now, in the Old Testament, especially in uh, Leviticus, right? Okay. Among the Israel, they are filled to grow the crop, right? And the crop will reap. Then it will become a harvest, right? But be, 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 before the mass harvest, there will be firstly the first fruit. Some top, top crops, they mature early, and they become the first food, right? And this first food will be uh, ripped and uh, brought to the temple of God to offer to God as the fresh of the field, as the fresh fruit of the field for God's satisfaction. This is called the offering of the first fruit. Then after these, after certain days, the entire field will be ripe. Right? The entire field will be ripe. Then the field become a harvest. Then they harvest the field. Right? Then after this harvesting, sun some, some, some of the uh, crop will be left here, one piece, there one piece, which is called a gleaning. Yeah, you know the gleaning, the gleaning, right? You know, according to God's ordinance given to the Israel, that the people of Israel should not pick up the gleanings. The gleanings should be left in the field for the poor people, for orphans, for widows and for 
sojourners. Right? This is God's ordinance. Right? This is cleaning. So you see in the type of the harvest, you have the first fruit, harvest, and cleaning. I tell you, after so much study, I found out in the rapture, exactly the same. You have the first fruit, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 14. Right there, in the first verses, first five verses, you have the first fruit. Then in the same chapter, you have verses 14, 16, telling you the harvest. You see? The field on the earth is ripe. Then Christ comes to reap it. That's the harvest. Then in Revelation 16, 15, only in that one verse, you have the cleaning. Cleaning. Okay. Three sections, three sections of the uh, rapture. The first fruit and the harvest and the gleaning. Okay, in the first section, there are five kinds of first fruits. Five kinds. <laughs> what are the first, what are the fru first fruits? They are the overcomers. Overcomers who are will be matured -er than others. Five, five kinds according New Testament description. But how to classify them is hard for us. But anyhow, you do have five different kind descriptions of different kind of overcomers. Uh, so you see the section of the rapture, a section, the section of the overcomers, and the five different kind of overcomers. Number one, of the man-child. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, you do have the man-child. There, in Revelation 12, you have a universal woman, which is universal and heavenly. You see, the son, as you would, is wrapping his whole body. And the uh, stars are crowned over her head. And the moon is under her feet. So he, she is the universal woman and heavenly. That signifies the entire body of God's people from Adam to the last one who will be saved. So, the entire people in the universe is signified by that heavenly and universal woman. And that woman was what? Delivering a manchel. Then that manchel is the stronger part of God's people. The overcoming ones among God's people. So they will be the first fruit. So they will be raptured to God before the last three and a half years. That is the time of the great tribulation. In other words, they will be raptured before the great tribulation. Okay? So, number one of the man child, small a. They will be raptured before the great tribulation of the 1,206 days. And these are the 42 minutes. You see, 42 by 30, you will get 1,260. 1,260 days are just 42 minutes. And these 42 minutes will be the three and a half years. Every year, 12 months. Three years, 36, plus a half year, 42 minutes. Either 1,206 days, or 42 months, or two and a half years, refer to the same period of time. This is the last half of this age. Last half of the last week of this age. So they will be, they will be raptured. The first class of, of uh, overcomers as the mantle will be raptured earlier. See, before 
the great tribulation. And then B, they were raptured to God and to his throne. Not to the air, but to the third heaven. In the third heavens where Christ is today. Amen. This is the first kind of world comer. Uh, when they were raptured, they were all died. They were all martyred. You see? Then they got resurrected. Now the second, the second first foot of the first foot in Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 and 4. They will be raptured before the manifestation of Antichrist and his persecution of the saints. That means also before the tribulation, before the three and a half years. You read Revelation 14, 9 to 12. To where? To Mount Zion. In the Bible, there are two Zions. One is earthly Zion. That is a peak around which Jerusalem is built, the earthly. Then there will be another Zion, heavenly, in the, in the third heavens, where Christ with the Father is today. You know, in uh, Revelation 14, it doesn't say these uh, first foot were, will be taken, <coughs> will be raptured. No such word there. Why? Because these overcomers all the time follow the Lamb. Amen. They are with the Lamb. So 14 of Revelation only says they are standing with the Lamb and among them. Amen. They are there. They are there. <laughs> that means when they are on this earth, <coughs> they are still there in the heavens. <laughs> they don't need to be raptured. Do you understand me? Yes. Where are you today? Sisters, tell me, where are you today? Huh? Following the lamb. Now, where is the lamb? I know you don't have to say this, that you are in the heavens. But if you check with those fruit, first fruit overcomers, they will say they are in the heavens. They don't need to be raptured. They are there. They are just there. <laughs> it's hard to say. Sometimes I talk to myself, where are you now? On the earth or in the heavens? It's hard to tell. Do you, yes? Okay. If you, are, if you are not so, if you are not in heaven today, when that time comes, it would be hard for you to go there. <laughs> okay? I hope that you understand me. Turn, okay. Now, the third kind of overcomers, the overcomers in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the top church, right? They, uh, Two top points of their character are these. Number one, they keep the word of God. Even they just have a little strength, they still keep the word of God. Number two, they never deny the name of Christ. This is why we don't like to have, have any denominational life, uh, any denominational name. We are not a Baptist. Well, neither Lutheran, neither the Presbyterian, neither Episcopalian, Methodist, all these names are insult to Christ. Amen. If you have, as a lady, if you have a husband, before your husband's name, you have another name, this is kind of an insult. Amen. Right? If my, man, my name, if my wife, Bears a name, Mrs. Wang. How about that? That's an insult. We are Christians. Amen. We are not Lutherans. Amen. We are not Baptists. We are neither Presbyterian, Amen. neither Episcopalian, neither Methodist. Amen. We are Christ. Amen. Right? So we must keep his name. 
not denying his name, and keep his word. Then, in such a church, there are overcomers. These overcomers will be raptured before the hour of trial on the whole inhabited earth. There will be what? An hour, a time of trial on the whole earth to test the people. That means tribulations. That is, you see, the great tribulation of the last three and a half years of this age. The same thing again. They will be raptured before the tribulation. You, you, you should read Revelation 3, 10, Matthew 24, 21, then Revelation 12, 13, 14. You should read them. B, they were raptured to the temple of God in the third heaven because they will, they will be pillars there where Christ with God is today. Now, the fourth kind of overcomers of the watchful and beseeching saints. These saints are watchful and praying all the time. This is in Luke chapter 21. They will be raptured before the coming of the great tribulation. Luke 21 and Matthew 24, not 31. You change this word to 20, uh, 31 to 21. But these three, two portions of the word you could see, these uh, watchful saints will be raptured before the tribulation. B, to be with God, to be with Christ in his parousia, presence in the third heavens. <clears throat> or to be uh, to the third heavens where Christ is today. Then the fifth category of overcomers uh, the watchful one of the two saints. You know, in Matthew 24, it tells us there will be two men working in the field. One will be taken. One will be left. Then two women in the meal right, to grant. Uh, one will be taken, one will be left. If you read the context of that portion, Matthew 24, around 35, you could see the men, the women, were two brothers in Christ. I mean, the men. Two men were brothers in Christ. And two women, uh, they are sisters in Christ. But one time will come, and eh? out of a sudden, one brother is taken, and one sister is taken. Right? <clears throat> of course, this is not the exact number. This is kind of significance. It signifies. Well, I must tell you this. Uh, in Matthew 24 and 25, in these two chapters, the Lord's prophecy covers all the people of God. All the people of God, by the Lord's coming, second coming, ten you see, out of 12, 10 will be dead. That means out of 12, you see, 10 of the 12 will be dead ones. Two will represent the living ones. Could you follow me? So in chapter 24 of Matthew, two represent all the living ones until Christ comes. And the ten virgins represent all the died saints when the Lord Jesus comes. So among the living ones, some will be raptured earlier. Right? Some will be taken, some will be left. This means they will be raptured before the coming of the flood of the great tribulation. The coming, upcoming Great Tribulation is likened to the flood at Noah's time. There will be a flood to come, to damage, to judge the entire world. That will be the uh, Great Tribulation. And they will be raptured to be with Christ 
in his parousia in the third heavens. This is all together the overcomers rupture. Five kinds, five classifications of the overcomers. They are of one section as the first fruit. Is this clear? Amen. Then B, the second, the section of the majority of the saints, including the resurrected ones, all the resurrected ones, all the dead saints through the centuries, through generations, will be resurrected. <clears throat> and the remaining ones, by the time the Lord will come, the rem remaining, the living ones, you have all the references, right? Uh, this will be at the consummation of the age. The consummation, the consummation, that the end of this age, probably within the seven weeks, especially within the last half of the seven weeks, three and a half years, that will be during the Lord's parousia and during the Great Tribulation. After the manifestation of Antichrist, and before the close of the Great Tribulation. This is fully proven by all the references I gave you on the list. If you read them, you could get these points. Then they will be raptured to the Lord's barn. You know, farmers have their house. Of the house, maybe at the corner of the field, there is a barn. Right? You understand this? So the Lord will come to the air, at the air, he will have a place to receive his harvest. That is the barn in the air, within the clouds, where Christ's parousia will be then. By this time, Christ's parousia will be no more in the third heavens, but it will travel to the air and stop there. You read Matthew and First Thessalonians and so forth. Okay? This is the section of the harvest. Now see the section of the gleaning. Exactly like the harvest in the Old Testament. The remainder of the saints, probably these will be the last ones persecuted by the Antichrist. After what? After the rapture of the majority of the saints. <laughs> the majority of the saints will be raptured probably at the very close to the end of the three and a half years, but still a little time left. Within that short time, Antichrist still persecute the saints. Right? So someone will be there left in the field as the gleanings. Tom, could you follow me? And this is proven by the word out of the mouth of Jesus in uh, Revelation 16, 15. You may read it. Uh, <clears throat> small one, raptured at the time the war of Armageddon, Armageddon will be going on after Christ's judgment seat in the air and his wedding in the air, after those two things, Christ came down with his overcomers to fight down Antichrist and his army and threw Antichrist into the lake of fire. That, that will be the last day of, three, of the three and a half years. At that time. This, this gleaning will be also wrapped up today, where Christ, where Christ's policy will be. Then plus this, there's an extra section. Plus to the first fruit, the harvest, the gleaning, extra section. The section of what? The section of two witnesses. These do, do not belong to the first fruit, neither the harvest, neither the gleaning. They stand for themselves. This will be Moses and Elijah. This will be at the end of the 1,260 days.
That is 42 months. That is the second three and a half years of the last week. Revelation 11, 2 and 3 tells us that these two witnesses will prophesy for 1,270 days. Then at the last day, they will be killed. Then they got resurrected. Then got ruptured. I studied carefully, I found out their rapture transpire, will transpire on the same day as the Antichrist was put, will be put into the lake of fire. On the same day. According to Revelation 17, 12, <clears throat> the fighting at Armageddon between Christ and Antichrist with armies on both sides will be only one hour. Just one hour. Within one hour, Christ and his heaven army will defeat Antichrist with his earthly army and throw Antichrist and the false prophet into the legal affair. Then on the same day, a third thing will transfer. That is, the whole house of Israel will repent. Amen. So on the same day, the two witnesses will be raptured, and Antichrist will be put into lake fire, and the children of Israel all will repent. That's the last day of the three and a half years tribulation. And that will be the last day of this age. Then the next age will begin. Okay? Then to there where Christ's policia will be. Okay. I go to the board to, to give you a little chart. It may help you. You know, I'm famous to put out poor chart. Okay? In brief, I just give you a little thing to impress you. Okay. Now, we are in the church age, right? This church age. Then it goes on like this. Goes on like this. Uh, suppose up to here, up to here, the seven weeks will begin. Right? Seven weeks. Seven weeks will begin. And we have seen the signs already. The restoration of the nation of Israel, the return of Jerusalem, these two are the strong signs that the seven weeks will begin. Okay, the, set, uh, the one week, sorry. Uh, the last week. Oh, the last week, say, the last week, huh? Okay, the last week. Now, this is the middle, right? How to divide these two parts? You know, in the seven day, seven years of the last week, Antichrist will make an agreement with the nation of Israel to allow them to, to worship God freely. This is clearly told in Daniel 9. Then of the middle part, Antichrist annuls his agreement. He became very anti against especially Jewish religion. So that was the time, that was the time Antichrist begins to persecute the Christians and the Jews. In Revelation, you have such a word. They are the one who, who keep the testimony of the law and the ones who keep the testimony of Jesus. The one who keep the law are Jews, and the one who have the testimony of Jesus are the Christians. Okay? Now, up to here, the, uh, the man child will be ruptured, right? Ruptured. No, no, not so. Won't be higher. Ruptured to the <laughs> heavens. <laughs> then the first foot will be ruptured, okay? Then the Philadelphia overcomers will be ruptured, right? Then the rook 21, <laughs> right? The watchful and beseeching overcomers will be ruptured here. And then the uh, Matthew 24, 
overcomes one of the two. That kind of overcomes will be rapture. Right? Then what else? These are the five categories. Right? So all these uh, uh, overcomers will be ruptured to the third heaven, to God's temple as the first fruit. This is the first fruit. Then the majority of the living Christians will be left on this earth. They have to pass through the tribulation to get them disciplined for maturity. Then about at this very, very time, about at this time, you see, just a little part of tribulation. Here, here, the majority of the resurrected saints and the living saints will be raptured to the air, to the air here. Could you follow me? Is this clear? Could you all see this? Okay. Then after the rapture of the majority of the dead and resurrected saints and of the living ones, Christ will have his judgment seat, his judgment seat, judgment seat to judge who among his saints should get reward, that they are the overcomers, and who should be punished, disciplined, that means they are the defeated ones to make such a judgment at the judgment seat. Then at the judgment seat, you see, Christ will ha have a wedding here. Right. He will marry with the overcomers right. who, who, who were judged by the judgment seat right. to be the overcomers. Right. See, so here you have the judgment seat. Here you have the what? The wedding. Then, <laughs> here you have the two witnesses. Two witnesses, you see, they will begin to preach from here. From here, 126 days, right? It will be just three and a half days at the end of 1,260 uh, 1, days. They will be killed. Probably they will be killed here, you see? Right. Living three and a half days. Their, their body, dead, killed body, will lie on the street in Jerusalem for people to see three and a half days. That will be an insult to them. Right. And they were killed by Antichrist. Antichrist will be the king in Rome. But at this time, he and his army came to Palestine, right. to Jerusalem. At Jerusalem, Antichrist killed his two witnesses. You see? And at the same time, at this, at this time, right, after the wedding, at this time, Christ is coming down. Because Antichrist is collecting his army here at Armageddon, right? Armageddon. And well, Antichrist will be preparing his army, and Christ, is after the wedding, is prepared to come down, you see. Then, to the last day, to the last day, the two, two witnesses resurrected and ruptured. And then Christ come down to defeat the Antichrist here. Amen. Amen. Could you see this? Amen. You keep this in mind, you read that online. And you check with the revelation, it is exactly so. I checked, I checked, I checked. Right? Have you got it? <laughs> and Armageddon is called wine price. You see? In Revelation chapter 14, after harvest, there will be the wine price. Right? It is the Armageddon War. And this Armageddon War is mentioned again in chapter 19. Christ uh, as, the, as the one from the, from the heavens with his heaven army, the overcomers, coming down to defeat, to defeat the uh, uh, Antichrist and to, to, to throw him into the lake affair. 
So the same thing mentioned in chapter 14 as the wine price, and in chapter 16 of Revelation as the war and Armageddon. Then in chapter 19 as the war itself. Then in chapter 17, it also mentioned a little bit that they, they called and chosen faithful ones will as the army from the heavens to go down with the, uh, uh, the husband, with the, bro with the bridegroom to fight against Antichrist. So the same thing, four chapters mentioned, you have to read it. Be careful to know this. So all the things will be just crowded here. The two witnesses will be resurrected, rapture, and Christ will come down to defeat Antichrist. Christ will, uh, Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire, and then the Israel will repent in the city of Jerusalem. That will be the close of this age. The last hour of this age, the end of the tribulation. Then a new age will come. Amen. That will be the beginning of the 1,000 year of Christ reigning, Amen. which is generally called the millennium. I just stop here. I hope that I could impress you with this. Then what shall we do? We just get, we have to prepare ourselves, Amen. get us ready, Amen. right? Prepare yourself, get yourself ready. Amen. By what way? By watching. Amen. Watching and praying. Amen. Right? Watching and praying to get yourself to grow and to mature in the spiritual life. Amen. Then you will be matured earlier, then you will be counted as the first fruit in God's eyes. Amen. Then you will be raptured away from the trail, the great tribulation, which will come down upon these inhabited earth for three and a half years. If not, you will be left on this earth to go through the tribulation. Of course, that will be for your goodness. That tribulation will be just will be likened to the uh, corn sin. Scorching, huh? scorching, scorching sin. When the sin is in the middle of the day, it becomes scorching. The tribulation will scorch over you, defeated ones, to get you dried up, matured. You know the wheat. When the wheat is ripe, it get dried up. No, no water will remain in the wheat. But when the grapes are ripe, right, they, they absorb more water from the earth. So we all have to grow to get out from the earth, to dry up from this earth, right? Then we could get ourselves matured to be the first fruit. I just stop here. Try the best to say something. Amen. Brother Lee, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, does this mean that the, the ones in the gleaning do not pass through the judgment seat of Christ? This is a small, small problem. Let me show you, huh? Okay. The judgment seat here, right? Is here. And uh, these may be, may be uh, just, just. Uh, I am even doubting, maybe just one day. You see? Right on the same day judgment finished, the law will have his waiting. The, the waiting is over, then he comes down. He comes down on the way to fight the war at Armageddon. On the way, the Lord says, I am coming as a thief. You have to get yourself prepared. So the time is very close. Number two, the number must be very small. So the gleanings, the gleaning will, will not need to pass through the judgment seat. Rather, they will just be ruptured to join. They don't need to be judged. They 
will be the overcomers. <laughs> right? So they don't need to, judge, to be judged. They will be spontaneous. They will be the overcomers. And they will, on the way, I believe, join the heavenly army. And the same thing with the two witnesses. Two witnesses will be raptured after the judgment seat and the waiting. But I believe when they get to there, they will join the heavenly army. Does this satisfy you? I consider so much about all these things. I am ready to be asked because I have checked, not boasting, I have been studying this over 60 years. Not every day, of course, but quite often. Quite often. I don't remember how many times I had spoken on these things again and again. Now, all these things are in the notes of this recovery you could get. When you read, you could see all these things, all the outlines are written from this note. Okay? I, I believe what the law has shown me is very satisfactory. Amen. It's just like the pieces of big saw. Big, big, big saw. Right, puzzle. We have put them piece by piece, big piece or piece. Now it gives you a clear victory. Clear picture, okay? Amen. Try the best to say something. Amen. Okay, you can ask more questions. Okay, uh, under point three, the sections of the rapture, there are five sections, right. including the man child, the first group, the overcomers, <coughs> the watchful, the teaching saints, and the one of the two. Uh, are these five separate classes of believers, or is there an overlap between them? Sorry. I tried my best to get any hint how to classify these five descriptions of five categories is hard. I couldn't find out. So I just have to classify them as five classes. Maybe actually not this many classes. But be sure <coughs> the man child will be separated from the 144,000. Now, concerned that the number of 144,000 is a big problem. Schools are not just two or three, different school of opinions. Of course, Gavite, Robert Gavite, is very strong. He says the number is the exact number, the exact number. It must be 144. Because he says in the first chapter of this book, seven churches are seven churches. <coughs> Right? I may admit this, yet you have to know all the numbers are active numbers, but all of them bear spiritual significances. For instance, seven churches, yeah, were really seven churches in Asia, but the seven bears a spiritual significance that indicates the seven churches represent all the churches through generations in seven stages. Amen. So it must be the same. 144,000 may be the exact number, yet it bears the spiritual significance. Amen. In number, we may be not, we, we will not be among the 144,000, but in spiritual significance, it may cover us. Amen. Right? Yeah. The same thing, so it's hard for us to classify uh, the overcomers in Philadelphia will stand just by themselves. The Lord Jesus will deal with them just by themselves, not including others. It's hard to say. But anyhow, you have these five descriptions in the New Testament concerning these five situations. Okay? Do you want to say something about the virgins? Yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this matter of virginity, you see, <clears throat> you have to realize <clears throat> the ten virgins represent all the dead saints from Adam to the time the Lord Jesus comes. Right? Ten virgins. But not all the dead saints were females. You see? 
In the eyes, all God's people are female, including me. I'm a man. But in the eyes of God, I'm a female. So all the dead people of God are represented by ten virgins. Right. So virginity right, does not only refer to the sisters, even refers to us, the brothers. And in Matthew 19, the Lord Jesus talked to Peter about this, yeah. right? About this male virginity. Yeah, right. So to study the Bible is not so easy. You, you always have to take care of the exact thing. Meantime, you also have to take care of the spiritual significance. Right. Right. <laughs> Where do you put five wise virgins? Well, no doubt, because they are permitted to enter into the wedding feast. They are overcomers, right. right? You have to know to attend the wedding is one thing. To attend the wedding feast is another thing. Uh, right. See, I think, I think in one of the all I put out already. The wedding is just on the day. Yeah. The wedding feast will be 1,000 years. Yeah. Right. 1,000 year kingdom will be a wedding feast. Right. So these uh, <coughs> wise virgins will be invited not only to the wedding, but also to the feast. Right. Right. To the wedding feast. So no doubt this indicates they are overcomers. <coughs> then concerning the five wise, Again, here, no, even Gavait admit the ten virgins, the word ten and five, are spiritual figures, right. not exact figures. Yeah. You see? So to say the Bible is not so easy. Right. Okay? This doesn't mean half of the right. dead saints are wise right. and half <laughs> are, are foolish. Right. No, no. This only indicates two kinds of uh, categories among the dead saints. Some are wise, some are foolish. And the wise ones get themselves prepared with the Holy Spirit, and the foolish ones didn't do anything. So they will miss the mark, right? Are the wise included in the man-child? So this is a problem. Okay. I told you already, I cannot find any hint that the five, right, the five, right, uh, according to Matthew 24, 25, it seems all, okay, let me say this. No doubt the ten refer to the majority of the dead saints. Am I right? And surely they are not part of the man child. Now, if it is so, if it is so, the man child's resurrection is another category of resurrection. Because the man child also are the, the martyrs. This may be this may be corresponding to what Paul says, the extra the ex resurrection in uh, Philippians three. But we, we dare not to interpret exactly so, right. because we do not have strong evidences for us to make a decision. Right. So I must tell you what we have put out, that we have found out from the Bible is just the principles. Right. In the principle, there must be some details right. are not revealed in the Bible. So we cannot find any hint to prove what's what. But I feel good that the principles are sufficient to teach us the special lessons. <clears throat> okay. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.